As a reminder, a rational number is the ratio of two integers. So it can be written in the form a over b, where a and b are integers. Here are some examples of rational numbers. The number 2 is a rational number. It's a ratio of the integers 2 and 1. Uh, minus 7 quarters is rational. It's a ratio of the integers minus 7 to 4. Before looking at the proof that root 2 is irrational, we have to look at the form that even integers and odd integers take. So I could write down some even integers. You know, we could take negative ones like minus 4, minus 2, and so on. But we will just look at positive integers. Notice that these numbers can be written as 2 times some integer k. Okay, so k is an integer. That means it belongs to the set z. You see that 6 is just 2 times 3, 4 is just 2 times 2, and so on. 8 is 2 times 4. Now what about the odd int integers? So let's just take some of the positive odd integers. 1, 3, 5, 7. They can be written in the form 2 times some integer plus 1. So for example, 7 can be written as 2 times 3 plus 1. We can do that for all odd integers. Now we know that if we multiply two even integers together, we get an even integer. So for example, if we multiply 6 by 4, we get 24, which is an even integer. More generally, an even integer has the form 2k. So we could take an even integer, which is 2 times some integer m, and multiply it by a different, or maybe the same even integer which we could write as 2 times n. m doesn't necessarily have to equal n. But you see, if we multiply them, we get an integer of the form 4 times mn, which can be written as 2 times 2 times mn. So, you know, if we multiply two even integers, we get an even integer. See, this number has the form 2 times k, where k in this case is 2mn. Now, we also know that if we multiply two odd integers together, we get an odd integer. Okay, so that's something that we observe, but let's look at a proof of that fact. An odd integer can be written in the form 2m plus 1, where m is some integer, and we want to multiply this by another odd integer. So let's call the other odd integer 2n plus 1. It could be different from this one. So we get 4mn plus 2m plus 2n plus 1. So notice what we get we get something that has the form 2 times k plus 1, where k in this case is the, this expression in here, 2mn plus m plus n. But the important point is, is that the result is an odd integer. So th this is a proof that the product of any two odd integers is an odd integer. So with those facts in mind, we can now prove that root 2 is irrational. Now we're going to do a proof by contradiction. So that means that we will assume that root 2 is a rational number. If it's a rational number, it's the ratio of two integers, a and b. So we will derive some consequences of this assumption and see if it leads to a, con leads to a contradiction. So if root 2 is rational, we can square both sides and we get 2 equals a squared over b squared. We can multiply both sides by b squared to get a squared equals 2b squared. But notice that 2b squared has the form 2k. And we saw that any integer that has the form 2k is an even integer. So now we've shown that the numerator must be an even number. So whatever root 2 is, it, well, if it's a rational number, the numerator must be even. Okay, if a squared is even, it means that a is even. A cannot be odd, because if A was odd, you know, if we multiply an odd number by an odd number, we always get an odd number. That's what we saw. Um, so A must be even. Now, if A is even, it means that A can be written as 2 times some integer. So that K is some element of Z. It's some integer. Um, okay, so now let's go back to here and replace a with 2k. And if we do that, we get 2k times 2k, which is 4k squared. 
Divide both sides by 2, and we see that b squared is 2k squared. So b squared is even, because b squared is 2 times some integer. Just like before, if the square of an integer is even, that integer must be even. If b is even, it means we can write it as 2 times some integer. I'm not going to write k here because we're setting a equal to 2k, so let's say it's 2 times m. So we can write a as 2 times some integer and b as 2 times some integer, since we found that both a and b are even. That means that we can write root 2 as 2k over 2m, the 2's cancel, and now we've simplified root 2 down to k over m. So initially, this thing must not have been simplified down to its lowest terms, because we've discovered that both a and b are even. We can imagine repeating this process, and we will end up showing that both k and m are even. So both k and m can be divided by 2. You can see that we've run into a problem. If root 2 is a rational number, that means it can be written as the ratio of two integers, we cannot keep dividing the numerator and the denominator by 2 indefinitely. You know, eventually we're going to come to a fraction in its lowest terms. But yet our proof is telling us that we can. That if root 2 is a rational number, you know, we just keep repeating the process up here. And uh, we keep showing that numerator and denominator are even. Since that makes no sense for a rational number, it means that our original assumption that root 2 is a rational number is false. That means that root 2 is a new type of number. If it's not a rational number, we say it's an irrational number. A fact about irrational numbers is that we have no repeating sequence of digits in the decimal expansion. The decimal expansion goes on forever, but it has no repetition. Um, on the other hand, rational numbers have either a finite decimal, like the number 18, for example, or if it's not finite, like the rational number 3 13 we can see the pattern. You know, after the first six decimal places, the decimal expansion repeats itself. So we get 230769 and another 230769 and so on indefinitely. Here is how we show the number square root of 2 on our number line. We construct a right angle triangle whose two short sides are 1. By Pythagoras' theorem we can see that the hypotenuse is the square root of 2. So as a check, if you square the hypotenuse you get 2 get the sum of the squares of the other two sides, you also get 2. So, now we want to show this line on our number line. So we can just use a compass to do that. Put the compass here at 0, set the compass to a length equal to this hypotenuse, and draw an arc. That's root 2. Here is a closer look at this number. You can see it's between 1.4142135 and 1.414214. Let's look at the construction of the square root of 3. So we use our previous construction where we showed root 2 on our number line. And what we do is we erect a perpendicular line of length 1. Now, by the way, of course, we saw in previous videos how to draw a line perpendicular to a given line, or you can just use a ruler and a set square. Now if we draw in the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle, it's easy to see that it's equal to the square root of 3, because the square root of 3 squared, the square root of hypotenuse, is indeed the sum of the squares of the other two sides, the two short sides. Okay, so like before, to show root 3 on our number line, get your compass, put the point of the compass here, set it, the compass to a length equal to the hypotenuse, and uh, construct an arc down onto our real number line. So this number is the square root of 3. 